Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and welcome to this. It's, it's amazing to even say it, the 50th anniversary celebration of this jazz program. It's so great to be here. And uh, you are going to hear today from our current students, later as a finale from some of our past students, from our faculty, former, current directors. It's uh, kind of a cavalcade, but don't worry, we'll have you out of here by midnight. No, it's not a long concert, but it's a special concert. So uh, I would like to start this process by introducing gentlemen who, uh, if you are, how many of you are jazz room regulars? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thanks to all of you. Uh, this is the final jazz room concert of the year, and uh, I certainly do everything involving this uh, jazz room with uh, my fellow faculty member who I'm about to introduce. We plan the gigs together, we plan who the artists are, we work on the grant proposals together, we uh, deal with all of the backstage, uh, you know, what do you mean they need only green and red M&Ms backstage? <laughs> who, who covers that? <laughs> Us. So uh, he is a, a beautiful arranger, he is a great singer, and he's a fantastic teacher, and as I said, he's truly my uh, you might call partner in crime here at the Jazz Room. Please greet Mr. Pete McGinnis. It's an awful lot to live up to. I'll try to. Um, like Dr. Dempsey said, I, I also want to say we're really pleased that you're here for this final Jazz Room. Um, I do want to say one thing about this special performance. We're obviously celebrating the 50th anniversary of, of the William Patterson University Jazz Program, one of the greatest in the country. I'm sure most of you know that, but one of the first in the country as well. Uh, back in 1973, there were only a handful of programs in America that had a college full-time uh, bachelor's program. Uh, at the time, we only had the, ma the bachelor's until we got the master's later in jazz studies, and we're very, very proud of that. And uh, one thing I do want to say, some of the music we hear tonight, in fact, all the music from the beginning to the end, will be music that features uh, the compositions and performances by past and present directors of jazz studies, going all the way back to the, our founder, along with Dr. Marty Criven, the great Thad Jones. There'll be a lot of that on this performance today. Um, moving on to music of Rufus Reed, and you may know Rufus is here today to both perform and conduct his own music. Uh, James Williams, of course, was here for a number of years and his music will be represented. Um, Mulgrew Miller as well. Uh, we've had a lineage of amazing people as the head, heads of our jazz studies program. I mean, it's really a who's who of jazz history. And of course, ending with um, Bill Charlap, who will be performing as well. So we're starting from the beginning and coming to the current time with our Jazz Studies program, honoring the heads of the jazz program throughout the years. That said, the first group that's gonna perform is a, um, one of the smaller student groups, but you wouldn't think so. This is a 10-piece group. This is a group I have the good fortune of leading. Uh, it's made up mostly of the master's students who are jazz composer arrangers in that track, but also other musicians to fill the band up. It's a 10-piece band. I've never had a group quite this big before. And when I found out the number of musicians I had in the band, I had a great idea. Dr. Dempsey, years ago, a few years ago, transcribed the original version of Thad Jones's very famous uh, song and arrangement called Little Pixie. Now, if any of you are th fans of Thad Jones, you'll know the Little Pixie arrangement from the big band book. This was recorded in the mid-1960s. But what you may not know is the original incarnation of the famous Little Pixie is actually from 1963. It's for a smaller five-horn combination, which you see right in front of you here. And it was for an album for Louis Belson called The Thunderbird, which Dr. Dempsey took the great challenge on to transcribe because it's not published anywhere. He gave it to me and I crossed the T's and dotted the I's, shall we say, and fixed things up, a little bit of a partnership. And it's been kind of a dream that we can actually perform this thing after all that work we put into it. This couldn't be the more, most appropriate place to present this. So the first performance will be by 
the William Patterson University Jazz Arrangers Ensemble. Quickly, very quickly, because we don't have a lot of time, uh, I'm going to mention the horn section, going from trumpet straight down to baritone sax. On trumpet is Ian Livingston. On alto sax is Zach Serra. On tenor sax is Ben Lindenberg. Trombone is Isla Brownlow. And baritone sax, Chelsea McBride, our horn section. And our mighty five-piece rhythm section, starting from the vibraphone, going straight down to the drums. Dan Nivelle on the vibes, Alonso de la Fuente on guitar, uh, Bill Gaguenaden on the piano, Curran DeVico on the bass, and uh, Jake Richards on the drums, the rhythm section. Like I said, Luke Richards on the I tell my students, everyone's entitled to one mistake in life. I just made mine. And uh, they're going to present this wonderful uh, rendition of the arrangement of Little Pixie by Thad Jones. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
the Rangers Ensemble. Now you're looking at the, the big band, but the core of this program is and has always been 24 small groups, and you just heard one of them. And we could just uh, keep marching these fantastic small groups out in front of you, and we would be here till midnight, but you won't believe it, the level. And what you just heard was uh, truly history, as Pete said. You know, this piece was recorded in 1963, and I think it'd probably be a good bet that it has not been played since then. That's a flat 60 years since it's been heard. So, uh, congratulations, you were there. <laughs> and uh, before we continue with this, I want to, first of all, say we have so many hugely dedicated donors here and special people, very special to us. They are special people, but particularly to us. And we want to welcome all of you and thank you for coming. We have very special honored guests today, and uh, this comes from about three days ago. As you've heard many times, I'm sure Thad Jones was the founding director of this program. He wrote that piece 10 years before he taught here. Uh, but we have Thad Jones's daughter and son, and some of their extended family. So a special welcome to Thedia Jones and Bruce Jones. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Wow. And we had a, uh, a, a kind of a very special uh, Jones family moment. We had, I'm so grateful, I'll never forget our dinner we had together. And I mentioned that we were opening with this tune the little pixie. And Thedia turns to her younger brother, Bruce, and says, you know, that tune's for you. You're the little pixie. And he said, what? I didn't know that. I love that tune. So, so Bruce, that was for you. The little pixie. So we will now uh, continue with, uh, by playing two more now. This is I should, by the way, formally introduce a band that, you know, one of the reasons that I come in here in the morning, I mean, all 85 of these students and all of you, there are numerous reasons that inspire me to be here every day, but one of the main reasons are the students in this band. I get to have the beautiful uh, role of being their director. These are the students of the William Patterson Jazz Orchestra. Please greet them. You will never find more talent combined with better attitude and outlook on life. It's just amazing to be there. You know, we've been working on, as some of you uh, heard a few weeks ago, we celebrated the, what would have been the 100th birthday of Thad Jones. And you know, these students would come up to me in the corridor and say, so Dr. Dempsey, you know, at bar 13 of this arrangement we're playing, you know, the 1969 version, they play this note short, but by 1973, they're playing it long. What should we do? I mean, this is a teacher's dream come true. <laughs> These students are so immersed in this music and this semester, this year, in Thad's music. But I also want you to know, I've been directing this band, uh, and I took over, I'm very humble to tell you, I took over from Rufus Reed, who had directed the band for 20 years, so now I've directed it for 21 years. And in that time, in all the performances we've done here, in all the performances we've done off campus, touring around, we have never done a performance that has not included at least one piece by Thad Jones. Always. So that's kind of part of our mission. So you're about to hear two of those pieces now. Uh, first, a piece that a lot of people don't realize that he uh, wrote 25 arrangements for the Count Basie Orchestra. He was a member of the band for about 10 years, and he wrote a lot of charts, a lot of well-known pieces. And this is one of the true masterpieces. Oh, and I also, one more introduction. This is so beautiful, sort of 
there's a, there's a double bassy connection here because the arrangement that they are going to read is the original arrangement from the Count Basie Orchestra, but they didn't have it. We have Thad Jones' archive here on campus, and we were able to actually give it back to the Basie band again. So it's the original manuscript from Thad Jones and the Basie Orchestra from, I think it's 1959. But so there's that connection to the Basie band, but then we also have helping us out on lead trumpet, one of our fantastic alums, a gentleman who, when he was here, should I name how many years ago that was, Fred? Maybe. Okay, you do the math. So that was 24 years ago, that was his chair. He played lead trumpet with this band in 1999. I remember doing a concert with Michael Brecker here with you playing lead and Kenny Burrell and so many others. So, and since that time, since graduating, he's had such an amazing career. That has included many, many, many tours with the Count Basie Orchestra of today. So it's a double connection. So in this tune, this is Thad Jones' Counterblock, 1959, featuring the band lead trumpet, Mr. Freddie Hendricks. <laughs> Counterblock. And this, this will feature uh, James Bally. You know, every Count Basie arrangement starts with piano, always. And then Basie would bring the band in. So James is going to bring us in today. So that, and then we're going to hear from our uh, two alto players, Dan Lashinsky and uh, Ben Lindenberg. And also uh, Eli Strombaum gets to play Sonny Payne and uh, hold forth uh, later on. So here we go. Counterblock, Thad Jones.
Outer Block, Dan Lashinsky, Ben Lindenberg, James Valley, Eli Strombaum, the saxophone section, great job. So only about a decade, maybe 12 years after that, the world had changed. If you think about the difference between 1959 and 1970, just politically, culturally, racially, musically, what had happened. And at that point, Thad was co-leading Thad Jones, Mel Lewis Orchestra, and he did something really uh, revolutionary. He signed a contract with Philadelphia International Records. This is not a jazz label. This is Gamble and Huff. You know, Philly Soul, Lou Rawls. You'll never find, you know. <laughs> Actually, mark down on your programs, Dempsey featured vocally on the 50s. Yeah, so th this was a, a soul R&B label. And this is one of the first tunes that he recorded on that label. And uh, it'll feature, again, Ben Lashinsky. No. <laughs> I had to screw that up somehow. Ben Lindenberg, yes, Ben Lindenberg. He gets two, he gets two introductions because I missed him the other night. Then I combine the two of you today. So on the soprano, what's well, kind of an iconic soprano solo at the beginning. And uh, it'll feature uh, playing the Pepper Adams solo, Chelsea McBride from Toronto, Ontario. It'll feature uh, Owen o o O'Mara on guitar, and it'll feature Richard LaRoche on trombone. This is, this is a, a kind of a Thad Jones, Mel Lewis soul R&B tune and it's become iconic. And also I should introduce that it features unaccompanied brass section. He tried this with the Count Basie Orchestra and that's probably one of the reasons that Mr. Basie said, you know Thad, it would be great if you formed your own group. <laughs> so uh, this is us, Thad Jones, Mel Lewis, us, composed, arranged by our founding director, Thad Jones.
Us, us, Owen O'Mara, Chelsea McBride, Ben Lindenberg, Richard LaRoche, the brass section. Well, you know, a guiding force behind this program for 50 years has been its artistic leadership. And as I was just saying, and as the band just showed you very powerfully, the great Thad Jones was the one who originally lit the rocket engine on this program and uh, uh, really started things in motion. And when Thad departed, uh, there was a gentleman playing bass with uh, his band who uh, my predecessor and uh, I don't think I've mentioned his name yet, but we were talking about him downstairs. Certainly needs to be a huge part of tonight's concert, and that is Dr. Martin Criven. Uh, he was a great mentor to me. I am the only other person to hold that position of jazz coordinator here in the 50 years, and uh, he was a huge figure. I'll be speaking more as we switch the drum sets about him. But suffice to say, Dr. Criven called this gentleman and said, would you like to come out and work with the students? And he said, absolutely not. No, <laughs> I did not come here to do this. I'm a player, I teach, but I'm not a teacher. Well, would you be able perhaps to finish out the week and just sub? Well, that turned in. Thank God for our program. Thank God for all of the students who've gone here. And for me, that turned into 20 years. And uh, since his retirement, he has gone on to be known as much as a composer and arranger as the world-revered bass player that he has always been. And uh, we would like to play one of his compositions now, one of his newer compositions. And he is here to conduct it. This is Rufus Reed's uh, 
this is Rufus, whoop, I did that. That was my mistake. Never mention the person's name until it's time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's his tribute to John Coltrane's recording, A Love Supreme. So in other words, look out. It's huge. Please greet my mentor, the former professor and director of jazz studies here, Professor Rufus Reed. Thank you very much. Look at all, look at all of you. <laughs> uh, wonderful, thank you. Um, how about this band? Huh? I had the good fortune to have a gentleman by the name of Ron Wasserman, who's a double bassist. He's actually the principal bassist of the New York Ballet Orchestra. And he would do all kinds of music. And he had an organization called the uh, uh, Jazz Harmonic Orchestra. And so he came up to me and said, I'd like you to uh, write an arrangement on Lo A Love Supreme. John Coltrane's A Love Supreme. And I said, absolutely not. I mean, it's such an iconic recording, but all of us, including these people behind me and before, have been inspired in some manner by uh, uh, John Coltrane and his music. And so uh, this is an inspiration uh, that I call of regal patience.
Rufus Reed, the William Patterson Jazz Orchestra. So, so band, in the immortal words of Duke Ellington and Thad Jones, this is when you leave now. Some of these things we worked out and some we didn't. Thank you so much. That was fabulous. They shall return. Before we move on, oh, and by the way, one program note. <laughs> there is no intermission on this concert, so if you had a nice tall glass of Coke before you came in here, I'm so very sorry. <laughs> But you can please, we're all, you're among friends here. If we need to miss a, pe a piece, just, yeah. Just so, a little programming note for you ahead of time. Uh, there is an important matter that you should know about this program. And that is, when Dr. Criven wrote this program in 1973, he didn't just design a new academic program. As Pete McGinnis said earlier, this was one of the first five such programs in the country. There were only four other schools when we started it. Jazz was commonplace on many, many campuses, but jazz was something we did Friday night at the dance when the beer kegs were there. We did it for fun. Heaven forbid that it should not actually come into our classrooms. You know, jazz uh, was a four-letter word, if you will at that point. That was something that, you know, uh, went along with, uh, to, to paraphrase uh, W.C. Fields, you know, a gentleman is somebody who knows about jazz, knows how to play jazz, but doesn't. That's a, the famous quote. I think it was actually about the saxophone, but it uh, also involves jazz. So this was one of the first programs, but you should know that it wasn't just a new program. The point is that it was a whole new model. It was a whole way, new, different way of college level education. And that was bringing major jazz figures directly onto the full-time faculty on a daily basis. Not just visiting to sort of say hello and meet with the students or coming in as a guest artist, but to be there every week week in and week out. And so when Thad Jones got that job, it made history. You know, other schools had attempted it, but they had not been able to pull it off like they did here at William Patterson College, as it was known then. And uh, that emphasis, that point of view of bringing the New York jazz mentality, the New York jazz community, that energy, that heart, that love into the classroom, not textbooks, not, as I was saying before, YouTube videos or whatever, the real people who are doing it. So that went on with the members of the Thad Jones Mel Lewis Orchestra. It went on with Rufus Reed. It went on with James, the great pianist, James Williams, who succeeded Rufus. And it went on with um, the gigantic pianist Mulgrew Miller, who passed away 10 years ago next month, by the way. And 
by all means, it continues with our current director today. So now we want, we're almost ready. See, part of this, I wanted you to know this, but I knew that this was the time to know it because we had to switch the drum set over. So I'm looking, yeah. So Rufus Reed now descends from the conductor's podium and uh, takes up the bass that uh, he is so, such an iconic performer on. And he is joined by a gentleman who today is kind of uh, functioning as, if you will, a super alum. He graduated in the mid 80s. Rufus Reed was his mentor here. He has gone on to great success in the business world, lives in Los Angeles, great success in the financial world, and uh, he has been a huge supporter of this program, of the Living Jazz Archives, and of a scholarship in Rufus Reed's name, which several of these students hold. So it all comes around. And he also, aside from all that, apparently is a great drum tech, as you see. So please greet and welcome back to his alma mater, Mr. James Terrilli. And joining them in this trio, I'll uh, let uh, Bill uh, describe what they're going to do. This is a beautiful segment. That was Bill's idea, by the way. I want to uh, introduce the gentleman that I am so proud, so happy, so overjoyed to run this program alongside. Uh, he is here every week. He is uh, the leader of a trio that uh, has been together, uh, together with... Uh, with uh, Kenny Washington and Peter Washington for 22 years now. And uh, our students are learning so much every day from him. Uh, he is uh, as much of a world-class performer as he is. He is also at that level as an educator and as a human being. Please meet the great Mr. Bill Charlap. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here with James Turilli at the drums. And the maestro, Rufus Reed, at the bass. We're going to play a composition by the great Mulgrew Miller. Mulgrew Miller. Let's hear it from Mulgrew. He was a singular musician, a singular human being, and his music bears the mark of, well, all great music and all great art in that it carries with it the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. We're going to start with one of Mulgrew's pieces. Uh, well, this really has the essence of our music in it, in that it is a blues. It has the sound of the blues, but it also has the harmonic vision and rhythmic imagination that makes it stamped with Mulgrew Miller's iconic sound. So, here is Elation by Mulgrew Miller, James Terilli, Rufus Reed.
James Terilli. Rufus Reed. Now here's another composition by Thad Jones. There was no composer in the entire pantheon anything like Thad Jones. His imagination was just unbelievable. And, well, this composition, it goes to places that are so unexpected, so, well, as a professional musician, if you look at it on the paper, you say, that can't possibly work. <laughs> and it's so natural and so effortless, and the flow is so amazingly intuitive, yet it's unlike any other terrain that you've ever encountered. And even the name of this song, bears Thad Jones' incredible imagination and humor and uh, vision. It's called Little Rascal on a Rock. <laughs> and when you listen to it, you can just see that little rascal running around that rock. So, Little Rascal on a Rock, Thad Jones.
Rufus Reed. James Turilli. When I was in high school, I used to listen to a trio record, a great trio record, the Rufus Reed Trio, with Eddie Gladden at the drums and Kirk Lightsey at the piano. Now, I think I'm right. This is the title of that album, as well as a composition on that album. Is that right? OK. Perpetual Stroll. Speaks for itself. Rufus Reed, Perpetual Stroll.
James Torelli, Rufus Reed, Perpetual Stroll. There it is. And now we expand this group. Um, nothing gives me more joy than teaching with these gentlemen every day. And uh, this first gentleman I'll bring out, you, if you are, as you were saying, jazz room stalwarts, you know him from the summer jazz room, which, by the way, July 17th, the week of July 17th, we will be here five nights in a row in air-conditioned splendor. And that may not mean much to you now, but it will then. <laughs> and the faculty's playing the first night. Oh, it's a, it's a great lineup. Uh, we'll have it online soon, and uh, the summer jazz workshop for high school students coincides with that. And this gentleman teaches, he's in charge of that. He also teaches jazz history here, and he is a first call New York bass trombonist. For example, he just played uh, with the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra in their Toshiko Akiyoshi tribute. And I'm very honored to be playing with him. Please greet Mr. Tim Newman. And you met him earlier. Uh, my uh, co-conspirator here on the fall and the spring jazz room world-class arranger, as you'll hear in a second, amazingly great singer, fantastic teacher. Please greet Mr. Pete McGinnis. And in that last set you just heard, you heard compositionally from Thad Jones, you heard from Mulgrew Miller, you heard from Professor Reed, and there's one person missing, and we will uh, remedy that momentarily. This is uh, one of the really great compositions by the late James Williams. This is uh, his tune, Alter Ego, and this is actually, my theory is that this is the punchline to one of James's favorite puns. James was a notorious punster wanted in 37 states for this offense, actually. And he, he liked to say, what? Uh, no, sorry, I blew the joke already. Why did the minister's Sunday sermon go on for so long? Because of his alter ego. Thank you, and I apologize. So here's James Williams' alter ego. And by the way, this elegant little arrangement for two horns and voice is done by our own Pete McGinnis, alter ego. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dennis, Tim Newman, Bill Charlap, Rufus Reed, James Terrilli. We're going on the road, three week tour in my dreams. Thank you, everybody. This is the moment. See, here we have the next stage. This is where the effortlessly, seamlessly, as though I didn't even say anything, the students from the jazz orchestra just come out on stage. Crickets. Oh, right. Oh, I forgot. We have to change the drum set around. Well, that's okay. I can talk. The stage crew back there is going, oh, not again. Dempsey again. We're going to be here all night. This is the finale of this concert. And the true mark of this jazz program is its students. 50 years of students. And uh, there we go, perfect. And uh, what you're going to do now is hear a wonderful cross-section of these students sitting in with our band and a little bit of a, uh, if you're jazz fans, are you aware of jazz at the Philharmonic? Norman Grants used to tour these groups. They'd have, you know, our own wonderful Clark Terry and Flip Phillips and Lester Young and sometimes Charlie Parker if he made it and Oscar Peterson and they would go worldwide playing in major theaters, not just in clubs, you know. So this is kind of in that style. It's a jazz at the Philharmonic jam session and uh, Mr. Hendrix is going to descend from the ranks of the trumpet section and come out and join us. And uh, are there any other alums up there that are, some people have been arriving during the concert? 
Well, I will introduce the people I know are here, and then, who knows, some other people might. So you already know Freddie. Oh, and by the way, he already left, but Dr. Tim Newman got his doctorate at NYU. He got his master's at the Manhattan School of Music, and he got his bachelor's degree right here, taught by Rufus Reed. So Tim Newman will be joining us. The great saxophonist Roxy Koss will be joining us. You guys can come out if you want. Anton Denner, another fantastic, he's bringing his flute today. And uh, Matt King on piano will be joining us, and I don't know who else. This is the part, part of the concert I've lost the most sleep over, because I'm out here introducing air, so wish us luck. This is, uh, by the way, based around uh, the great Bill Holman chart, the ticker, the ticker. Blues and F for those of you marking your scorecards. So here we go, little jam session. Actually, I have an idea. Three of these students are, am I right? Yeah, three of these students are gonna be in another three weeks alumni. I would like to join, invite them to join us. So, Dakari Barkley, who gets his degree in three weeks. Ben Lindenberg, who gets his degree in three weeks. And Eli Strombaum, who gets his degree in three weeks. Come on out. Oh, right, you gotta play the chart first. Yeah, don't come out yet. Yeah, and, and the next thing is, after this is your first alumni activity, the next one is they call up and ask you for money. So this is the, but this is in front of it. So here we go, the ticker. Thank you. 
Jazz Orchestra, Tim Newman, Roxy Koss, Anton Denner, Matt King on piano, Ben Lindenberg, future alum, Zachary Barkley, Eli Strombaum. Thank you so much for today. I hope you had half as much fun as we did. On behalf of Rufus Reed, Bill Charlap, Thad Jones, James Williams, Mo Grumiller, we love you. Thank you very much. We'll see you this summer. Thanks. When we do this again in 50 years, you all get free tickets. <laughs>